Buongiorno, everybody. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Well, folks, today we're going to take you to the beautiful Italian Riviera. Speaking of which, I think me and my family were pretty lucky to visit there back in summer 2019 before COVID took over, and I was happy to see all sorts of famous landmarks that I've never seen before, like Rome, Naples, Pompeii, and Venice. Plus, I think it was nice seeing my countless Italian relatives, even though it was really difficult to keep track of them, since my dad is the 8th out of 10 Oro siblings. Also, in the past, I've looked at several different movies that took place in Italy, like Pompeii, The Thief Lord, Walt Disney's Pinocchio, and the Lizzie McGuire movie. But today, we're going to look into a very special animated movie set in Italy, which was put together by Pixar. So, released to Disney Plus on June 18th, 2021, the movie is Luca. So, let's get started. Set in a beautiful seaside town on the Italian Riviera, a young boy named Luca Paguro, along with his newfound best friend, Alberto Scorfano is about to experience an unforgettable summer filled with gelato, pasta, and endless scooter rides. But all the fun is threatened by a deeply held secret. They are sea monsters from another world just below the water's surface. So, what do I think of the movie? Well, I loved it. It was absolutely benissimo. Also, Ever since 2021 began, I knew my dad would love it, due to our Italian lineage. But to further explain why I love this movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The film was directed by Enrico Casarosa, marking this movie as his feature-length directorial debut after his 2011 Academy Award-nominated short movie, La Luna, which, back in 2012, preceded Brave in theaters. Luca is the first Pixar movie to be made almost exclusively at crew members' homes because of the closing of Pixar Campus in Emeryville, California due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Casa Rosa has described Luca as a deeply personal story, being inspired by his childhood in Genoa, Italy, with the title character based on himself and Alberto on his best friend Alberto Ceres, who voices a fisherman in the Italian dub of the film. Casa Rosa has stated that his summers were spent on the beaches where he met his best friend when he was 11 years old. He was really shy, and he found this troublemaker of a kid who had a completely different life. He wanted to make a movie about those kinds of friendships that could help you grow up. He also declared that this film's core is a celebration of friendship. Also, According to Casa Rosa, the result is a movie that pays homage to Federico Fellini and other classical Italian filmmakers with a dash of Hayao Miyazaki in the mix too. In addition of Fellini and Miyazaki's works, the films La Terra Trema back in 1948, Stromboli in 1950, and Stand By Me in 1986 were also cited as sources of inspiration. Plus, Ardman Animations and Wes Anderson's stop-motion films influenced Casa Rosa's artistic sensibilities. To prepare for the movie, Pixar sent several of the film's artists to the Italian Riviera for a research trip, during which they took photos of the area's landscapes and people. The film is rooted in the 50s and the 60s that Casa Rosa has described as a golden age that feels timeless along with the music and designs that were inspired from that period in order to capture a little bit of this timelessness of summer. The sea monsters featured in the movie were pulled from Italian myths and regional folklore, including the Talaro octopus and local little legends about sea dragons, creatures that either come to help or get into trouble. Casa Rosa said, that he always found the old sea monsters on maps really fascinating. The mystery of the sea 
was so represented in the weird creatures that he used to draw. And that area has a lot of wonderful myths. Casa Rosa also stated that the sea monster is pretty much a metaphor for feeling different, which I find is very interesting and understandable. Now, what do I think about the animation? Well, in my opinion, there's nothing to complain about here since this is a Pixar movie, and I think these guys did a great job at capturing the Italian Riviera. Also, my dad told me yesterday that Porto Rosso is a fictional town that was inspired by Porto Fino. Plus, I think the underwater scenery looks great too. Also to note, since Hayao Miyazaki is part of Luca's inspiration, it kind of feels a bit reminiscent to films like Porco Rosso and Ponyo with a little bit of splash. Also, this movie makes me think back to my past three visits to Italy, which were back in 1993, 2010, and 2019. Also, I like that the movie features various delicious foods like gelato, pasta, and watermelon, along with classical Italian songs like Gatto e la Volpe and several others. Plus, I think the Porto Rosso Triathlon Cup looks like a very thrilling and tough competition, which involves swimming, eating pasta, and biking. And that's basically all I got for Mustang Notes, so let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought into life. Our main character, Luca Paguro, is voiced by Jacob Tremblay, whom was in films like The Smurfs 2, Wonder, and Doctor Sleep. And he'll soon be voicing Flounder in Disney's upcoming live-action remake of The Little Mermaid. Now, Luca is a 13-year-old sea monster who lives in the waters next to the Italian coast, and he works as a goatfish herder with his parents. In my opinion, Luca seems like a very relatable kid. At first, he seems like someone who plans to stay out of trouble, but at the same time, he's pretty curious about the world above the sea, and I think Luca has a very vivid imagination. Plus, while exploring Porto Rosso, Luca seems to open up to a whole new world of possibilities. Luca's best friend, Alberto Scorfano, is voiced by Jack Dylan Grazer, who got to be in DC's Shazam, Scales, Mermaids Are Real, and It Chapter 1. And he'll soon be voicing in Fox's Ron's Gone Wrong. Now, Alberto is an independent 14-year-old sea monster with unbridled enthusiasm for the human world. In my opinion, Alberto seems like a lot of fun due to his free-spirited, expressive, and gregarious personality. Plus, I thought the scene where he told Luca about his dad abandoning him was very heartbreaking. Also, his hideout reminded me of a tower that me and my family came across back in summer 2010. Next we have Giulia Marcovaldo, an Italian girl who befriends Luca and Alberto, voiced by Emma Berman. Now, I gotta say, Giulia would have to be my favorite character in this entire movie, due to her being an outgoing and charming adventurer with a love of books and learning. But she's also skeptical towards the existence of sea monsters. Giulia only spends summers in Porto Rosso while spending most of the year in Genova with her mom. So she hasn't really cultivated many friendships, which makes her an easy target for the town bully, Ercole. But when she meets Luca and Alberto, Giulia immediately becomes friends with them, while stating that underdogs or outcasts need to stick together, especially when the boys agree to team up with her in the local race that she desperately wants to win. We also have Luca's parents, Daniela and Lorenzo, voiced by Maya Rudolph and Jim Gaffigan, respectively. Daniela is the typical overprotective mom who's determined to keep her son safe, even if it means to send him away, while Lorenzo is a well-meaning but sometimes distracted dad who's very passionate about raising his prize-winning crabs. Finally, we come to Ercole Visconti, 
the local bully of Porto Rosso, and the film's main antagonist, voiced by Saverio Raimondo. I find Ercole to be a real narcissist, who believes to be the very best person in Porto Rosso, and he bullies others as a way to brag about his self-proclaimed success and as a show of strength. Plus, Ercole cares deeply for his reputation, intending to keep his track record as a winner of the Porto Rosso Cup. Also, he's a very bad boss and a greedy sociopath. Other actors in the movie include Peter Son, Lorenzo Crisky, Sandy Martin, Marina Maceroni, and Sacha Baron Cohen. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Luca is a perfect movie to kick off the 2021 summer season. It has gorgeous animation, relatable and memorable characters, pretty good voice acting, beautiful Italian music, and a fun and emotional story. Plus, this is definitely a must watch for folks who are either Pixar fans or folks who love movies that are set in Italy. And I just hope that my countless Italian relatives will get a chance to watch this too. And trust me, you should definitely check it out because this film will make you feel nostalgic and it'll make you laugh, smile, even cry. And so, I give this movie a full cento percento. I know I'll be first in line when it's released to Blu-ray this fall. I hope. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, where I look at a TV adaptation of one of my favorite stage musicals, Mustang Power. Oh, and to all my Italian viewers and my Italian relatives out there, Arrivederci! Mwah!